Welcome everyone to the AI Research Bytes, this series of short and informative talks showcase cutting edge research work from ServiceNow AI Research Team. The AI Research Bytes are open to all, especially those interested in keeping up with the fast-paced AI research community. Today's session features a 15-minute talk from Patrice Béchard on using RAG, so Retrieval Augmented Generation, for workflow generation, and will be followed as usual by a 10-minute Q&A. Patrice is an applied research scientist at ServiceNow, and he's been working in the text to flow team for now almost three years. Um, he holds a bachelor's in degree in physics and a master's in machine learning from Mila. Up to you, Patrice. Thank you, Fanny. So, um, hey everyone, uh, today I will present uh, our paper called Reducing Hallucination in Structured Outputs via Retrieval Augmented Generation. Um, this is a uh, work that we presented this week, uh, this year at NACL, along with my colleague Orlando Marquez. Uh, and this is already part of a ServiceNow product that is currently in production. Um, so let's first start with the basics. Um, by the way, this is to the best of our knowledge. Um, so if a ServiceNow user uh, has some tasks they want to automate, uh, some tedious work they have to do um, day after day, they can obviously automate it. And the best way to automate um, tasks on the Now platform is via Flow Designer. Flow Designer is a tool that allows you to um, basically chain some, uh, some flow logics and some different actions in order to automate a given task that you have. Um, this is a no-code um, UI. And although it is no code, uh, it can be difficult to get started with just due to the, to the sheer amount of stuff you can do with Flow Designer. This is a very broad tool. So if you're, if you're a new user, it may be a bit daunting to start with. But uh, what we can do in order to help user get started quickly is uh, whatever they could, just prompt the LLM to build a workflow uh, for them, right? Should be much more easy than them to go through everything and figure out how to do what they actually want to do versus just asking the LLM to do everything for them. Uh, so that's where we start from. Uh, now, the task of text to workflow is not that easy. Um, basically, the task is relatively simple to frame. However, um, you have a natural language requirement coming from the user. And the goal is going to be to generate um, <clears throat> a JSON or a structured sequence of steps that define the workflow that you want to that you want to have. As an example, here we have a flow that's running on a daily basis. That's going to look up a bunch of problem records, loop over them, and if a condition is met, we're going to update you the, each of the records. Um, so coming from the user requirement here, we can translate that into this nice uh, JSON uh, output here, and then this is going to be rendered in the Flow Designer UI as a full. Uh, workflow that can be uh, tested and can automate some tasks for the user. Uh, one of the main issues with just letting LLM do everything is that it's going to tend to hallucinate some steps or some uh, tables that might not be available in a given customer instance or uh, things that are custom, uh, things that are a bit more obscure. Um, so this can be challenging for LLMs which just tend to, to make up stuff, right? This is not only true for, for workflow generation, this is true for, for everything. And the solution that we came up with is use retrieval augmented generation in order to suggest tables and steps uh, for the LLM to use when generating this new workflow. Uh, so the pipeline to make it work is relatively simple. Uh, our full pipeline is going to be composed of um, two different models. Uh, the first model that we're going to look at is the retriever. Um, the retriever is a custom model that we've trained for the specific task of step and table retrieval. So we're going to first use this retriever to create an index of steps and tables. And then uh, when a user requirement comes in, uh, we can query the retriever in order to find relevant steps and tables that are going to be helpful for us in order to create the full workflow. And once we have these suggestions, we can provide them to the LLM along with the user query so that the LLM can generate um, the workflow in JSON format, as we showed earlier. Um, as I was saying, there's two different steps, right? There, there's two different models. First one is the retriever. Second one that we're going to tackle is the LLM. 
Um, the retriever is not a off the shelf retriever that you can just download off the internet. Uh, we've actually experimented with some of these models and found they don't perform uh, very well because we're dealing with a quite specific task, which is retrieving service now tables and, and components for flow designer, which is relatively niche in terms of use case. Uh, so in order to get good performance on, on these tasks, we had to fine tune our own custom retriever uh, in order to perform well uh, on, uh, on these two things. Um, how do you train these retrievers? It's relatively simple. Uh, you start with real flows that you find, and from there you can create positive examples, and you can also create negative feedback that you want to give to the model, and the model is going to um, be trained using this positive and this negative feedback in order to be able to differentiate from signal to noise, or in other words, from relevant components to include into a given flow, from irrelevant components that you're not going to need when you want to create a given flow uh, for a user requirement. Now, once you have um, these steps and these tables that have been suggested by the retriever, uh, you can give them uh, to the LLM in order to generate uh, your workflow. How this is done? Uh, this is basically all text that we, tell, that we uh, give the LLM. Uh, we're gonna provide a list of tables that we find are gonna be helpful when generating the flow and also a list of steps that are going to be helpful in order to, to, to chain everything together. Um, obviously, we're going to also provide the user requirement uh, that we received from the user. And the goal of the LLM is going to be to basically put all the Lego blocks together in order to create a fully executable workflow that's going to accomplish some of the tasks that the user wants. Um, one important detail is that at training time, we always make sure that the components and the tables that are part of the final workflow uh, are in um, the original prompt. Why do we do this? It's basically so that we can train the LLM to copy from its context when generating the full flow so that it doesn't make up uh, irrelevant tables or components when generating uh, the final workflow. And the goal is going to be for the LLM to generate this red portion here. Uh, once this is done, we can return that back to Glide and we can render um, this, the, this workflow representation uh, in Flow Designer um, to get the, the full work, workflow working for the user. Um, in terms of data, uh, this is an interesting topic because here we're not dealing with um, uh, very um, frequent, let's say, type of, uh, of data, right? We're dealing with workflows, which is very service now specific. It's not as frequent, for example, as code, where you have a lot of code online that you can that you can scrape, or any text data where you basically have an infinite amount of data that you can train on. Here, the number of total workflows that we can get our hands on is relatively limited. Uh, but we found that with good labeling, um, quality data goes a very long way when you want to train uh, a language model. Um, so in our case, we have about 4,000 workflows that we've labeled. Uh, they come from internal instances, and we've also created synthetic uh, samples, either manually or programmatically, uh, to add that to the original uh, pool of examples. Um, so this is it for the training data, around 5,000 training samples. Uh, for evaluation, uh, what we did if we, is we've asked um, domain experts, such as flow designer PMs, to create around 150 workflows that are quite challenging that we thought um, um, the wording that they were using when generating these flows is very similar to what we're going to get from the users uh, at inference time. Um, so when users actually use a product. And we've also labeled around 1,000 workflows coming from other deployments of the ServiceNow platform, spanning different types of verticals, for example, um, health or, or insurance, that kind of stuff just so that we know that our model not only performs well on sort of the ITSM domain, but can scale to other domains also, because obviously our customers are gonna want to automate different tasks for their own use cases internally. Okay, so net, now let's uh, jump in the results. Uh, first of all, if we look at the retriever results, here we compare um, two off the shelf models that can be found online, namely GTRT5 base, and GTRT5 double XL. And we compare them against our own model that we fine tune on the task of table and step retrieval. 
what we find is that obviously in-domain fine-tuning is going to help quite a lot in terms of uh, downstream performance. We see here that we get an increase of around 20 to 30 percent on the, on both tasks. Uh, another thing to notice here is that even if we bump the size of the retriever that we use, going from GTI, GTRT5 base to double XL, we don't see much performance improvement only from uh, giving more parameters for, for the LLM. Uh, so fine tuning with in-domain data is much more important than just scaling uh, the size of the retriever in our case. Now, if we look at the um, performance for workflow generation, uh, we're going to look at four different metrics today. Um, and uh, so basically, we're looking at whether we're able to predict the flow trigger properly and the components properly also. And finally, looking at hallucinations, which is going to be one of our main, main metrics here. Uh, we find that um, if we compare a model that's fine-tuned but without retrieval augmented generation to a model that's fine-tuned with retrieval augmented generation, if we fine-tune uh, by... Uh, giving some examples to the model for components and tables, there's a very drastic drop in hallucinated tables and components, which is what we want, right? The less hallucination, the better. Uh, so we go from about 14% to around 2%. That's for tables and for components from about 20% to around 4%. So very drastic drop in hallucination, which is what we want. In terms of downstream performance, uh, this translates into uh, a pretty significant bump uh, when predicting the flow trigger. And on the component side, the bump is a bit less, uh, less evident, but, um, but it's still there. Um, so obviously we don't see any downgrades, so, so there is some benefits to that also. Um, okay, uh, now let's look at performance on out of distribution data sets. So these new, uh, these new domains such as health or insurance or finance, uh, which our model is not trained on. And let's see if there's any performance degradation uh, with using uh, that same model. And what we find is um, on the trigger and the bag of components uh, metrics, we're pretty much on par in terms of performance if we apply our method to other domain data sets, which is very good. And same with hallucinations. So um, there's a slight increase in hallucination for components. Uh, but nothing too drastic, which means that our approach generalizes to, to never before seen uh, sort of verticals for people who, who would like to create um, flows for their own use cases internally, uh, which is very promising to us, right? The less work the customer has to do in terms of getting started with um, the workflow generation, uh, the better it is uh, for everyone. Uh, so now we can look at a quick um, demo of what we currently have in production if I can manage to make it work. Okay, so here we're just gonna enter a dummy flow name. Uh, we're gonna provide a prompt to the language model uh, to generate a flow for service catalog request uh, with some uh, condition about the flow, the, the, the item uh, price that we want. Uh, we're gonna ask for a manager approval if the price is over a certain limit. And then if um, the approval is approved, then we're going to create a catalog task. That's what we see here. Uh, and finally, we're going to be able to send an email. So we see that the model was properly um, able to generate a full working workflow from this uh, user requirement that was provided here. So finally, in terms of key takeaways, um, generating workflows is not a trivial task. Um, it's very specific to ServiceNow use cases or, or enterprise use cases. Uh, but we find that using retrieval augmented generation, we're able to uh, increase our performance and most importantly, reduce the number of hallucinations we do uh, when generating these workflows for our customers. Uh, so what we plan to do next for this project is expanding to um, inputs throughout the flow. Uh, that's actually uh, going out uh, in Q4 2024, so very rapidly. And uh, we also want to increase um, uh, Gen AI throughout the product. So not only generating the workflows, but also being able to update them and basically help the users uh, create their workflows more rapidly, not necessarily from scratch, but updating what they already have, um, et cetera, right? Just to, to make sure um, users can work efficiently when creating workflows for their different use cases. 
Um, if you're interested in looking at our paper, uh, you can scan this QR code over here. Otherwise, thanks everyone for listening.